Okay, today I was going to talk about uh, some things that the Lord has been showing me uh, about threes. And by the way, this is my dog Rudy right here. I got another one over there named Gracie running around. But uh, anyway, uh, I was going to show you guys about the threes. He's, he's been talking to me uh, oh past few years about threes. And uh, and I want to show you some stuff that he... All these videos is basically on, on this subject here. Way, truth, life. And that he's really been showing me that. In times past, as a young man and throughout my life, and uh, not too many years ago, I always viewed him under these three things. Uh, law, sin, death. That's not way, truth, life. It's, it's the exact opposite of, of uh, law, sin, death. It's not way, truth, life. But anyway, the other night I was, I was running my route, and I was listening. I, I've got the Bible on CDs, and, and I, I listen. I have a lot of hours to listen. And uh, I was getting some revelations uh, about, I was thinking about putting on the whole armor of God. And, and I was listening to it, you know, and I had this thought, something's, you know, something's missing, you know. I counted seven pieces. And so I Googled a picture. And uh, I, I, I got on the Google, and uh, I Googled images of it. And every image that I came across, it was not how I saw it. And uh, you can Google any image you want to of uh, the, putting on the whole armor of God. It's Ephesians uh, 6, all the way through uh, 6, 10 through 20. Really, that's, that's the whole armor of God there. And, and you know, you know the, what's there, the helmet of salvation... Uh, the shield of faith, uh, having your loins girded with truth, uh, your, your shoe, your feet shodden with the preparation of the gospel, the shield of faith, uh, and the sword of the Spirit. So I Google the images and I realize something. The sword of the Spirit is not in your hand. You have the shield of faith, that's in your hand. But where does it say the sword of the Spirit is? It's in your mouth, okay? Think about it in Revelations and, and the sword, the flaming sword was coming out of Jesus' mouth. Uh, Paul talks about uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Uh, the sword of the Spirit is in your mouth, okay? Now, you, you, you've got to be careful what you tell people. You can It's a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. You can tell them loss and death, or you can tell them way to life, okay? It's a two-edged sword. So, and then that's, that's, that's the, what I want to share is the way to life. And uh, anyway, so I was thinking about that. I was like, Lord, if the sword is not in your hand, and it is in your mouth, which it is, read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. It tells you what to do with that sword. Uh, I think it was verse 19 and 20. Paul was desiring people to use their sword to pray for his sword. You know, what he would speak boldly out of his mouth. But uh, anyway, so... If you got all this stuff on and you got your armor on, and there's no sword in your hand, it's in your mouth. What's in your right hand? And it, and it just like hit me. Uh, putting your trust in Jesus Christ is so important. The power, the weapon should be in your hand. That's why all the illustrators put it in the hand. The sword of the spirit is in their hand. In any picture you want to look at, some people have a sword, uh, some people have a spear, but nobody has an open hand. Look, and this is what I want to show you: the open hand is where we know that God has done everything for us. He has saved us through His cross. He has sanctified us through His cross. Our faith in Him is presenting God with, there's nothing in my hand, Lord. In the very first of Ephesians 6, it says, Stand strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Okay, that's what's in your hand. Open-handedness, it's not me, Lord God. It's what you, has done, you have done for me. That's standing in the power of His might. So you're standing there with the whole armor of God on. You're, you're saved. You've got the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, and you're, you're walking in the gospel of peace, and your loins are girded with truth, and you've got this open hand. That's power. It's not what you have done, but what the Lord has done for you. That, that's putting on the whole armor of God. Open handedness. Not, what I, not my works, dear God, but your works. His works was the cross. That was, that was the works of God. He's done it for you. So standing in the faith in what Jesus has done for you, that's putting on the whole armor of God. That sword's not in your hand. We're not Christian spiritual warriors, you know. Your sword is in your mouth. Speak those things that the Lord has spoke. Believe those things. And uh, speak in the Spirit. Pray for people. Uh, spiritual things. 
But the power is in your hand, and it is the power is mine. Okay. Now, I'm probably going to have to make two videos uh, because I only have like 10 minutes apiece. But, uh, and then I was, I was going to show about Gideon. Okay. After I, I got that revelation, I was like, okay, Lord, the sword is in my mouth. And then I heard, I heard him say, uh, the sword of the Lord. I'm like, the sword of the Lord. I've heard that. And I, I, I Googled it real fast. And it's, it's mentioned once in the Bible. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So I'm like, okay, Gideon. And I remember he's been showing me about threes. And uh, the, the, I was looking at the story of, of Gideon. Actually, I was, read, I was listening to it. I, plugged my, I found it uh, in Judges 6. And I put Judges 6 in there. And I listened to the whole thing about Gideon. He was the sixth judge of Israel. Uh, judgment would come upon, upon the people. And he would send judges to deliver them. And Gideon was the sixth judge. And uh, anyway, this happens to be Judges 6. I, I believe he was the sixth judge. But I know it's Judges 6. Uh, is where you can read the story of Gideon. And, and I, most of y'all know, I've read it, you know, studied it, heard it in church. Uh, but he gave me a revelation. He said, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. He was the guy that stood in the gap. Okay? He was the guy who, what, what did he do when he delivered Israel? I mean, this was, this was cool. So he basically told Gideon to uh, get a bunch of people together, and we're going to go up, and we're, there's going to be, I think he was fighting the Midian, Midians or something. And... Uh, but this is how he did it. He said, gather the people, and he took them to some body of water. I think it was a brook or a stream or something. And he said, only the people, because there's way too many people there. He whispered in their ears and told them, look, tell every man if you're afraid and if you're fearful, go back, go back to your tents. He didn't want to use them. He said, there's too many. We don't, we, we don't need that many. God's deliverance is not that. We don't, need them. we don't need the fearful. Tell them, tell them to go back. And they did. A bunch of them left. I can't remember how many, but a bunch of them left went back. So there was a smaller group. And out of that smaller group, a thousand or something, there was, there was a smaller group out of the original lot that came. And he said, out of this group, I want you to go to the brook. And only the men that, that lapped the water up with their tongues, okay, with their tongues, not the guys who bowled it and drank the water with their hands, but those that lapped it with their tongues. And there happened to be 300 of them that used their tongue to lap the water with. Okay? There's the sword. Okay? And they 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 lap their they use their tongue to lap the water with. And there was three hundred of them. And he set them in three companies. And they went on up and this is what he told them to do. He said, take you empty pitchers. I don't know what time it is. Uh, let me make sure I'm not running over. Uh okay. But he says go on up and take you a, an empty pitcher. Back in those days, people didn't want to keep going down to the well or to the river to fetch water. So they had big pitchers. They had a lot in that pitcher. So that's a pretty good-sized pitcher. And he said, take ye lamps and put in the empty pitcher. So all these 300 men in Gideon had an empty pitcher, and they had their lamps. And they put their lamps inside the pitcher, so he was hiding the light from the enemies. And they've got this empty pitcher, and in their other hand, they had the trumpet. They had a trumpet. Each man had a trumpet. So you get a picture of Gideon and 300 men with an empty pitcher with a lamp in it and a trumpet. And, uh, and, I, and I want to go back just one second. And I do a little image of that. And most pictures, I found one picture that was correct. Most pictures have a torch. That the guys are holding a torch and uh, an empty pitcher. Look, what happens if you put a torch in a pitcher? You're going to get burned. okay? Or the, the torch is going to go out. It's got to have oxygen. You can't reach your hand in there and grab a torch out. It was a lamp. You know what little bitty lamps are back in the days? They looked like a little genie lamp and it had a little light coming out of it, about like the light of a candle. You just held it. It's a little bitty lamp. It had a light. It was a lamp that fit in the picture. Okay, I'm going to make another. I'm going to have to go to part two.